All right, welcome to the next video on Intro to Malware Analysis. This is for the Intro to Malware Reverse Engineering course. And the book that we're using is Practical Malware Analysis by Michael Sikorsky and Andrew Honig. We are working, of course, in our Windows XP virtual environment, and we have all of our software installed and malware samples ready to go. Let's go ahead and jump into Lab 6-1. It's going to be a nice, quick one today. Loading up IDA Pro, software that we'll be using for this. And I'm going to go ahead and open my Lab 6-1 binary. There we go. Default options are, of course, OK. Layout is a little cramped here, so I'm going to go ahead and pause while I readjust my toolbars. And there we go. Plenty of room for activities. Let's go ahead and jump in. Again, this is Lab 6-1 at the end of Chapter 6. And we're just diving a little bit deeper into the assembly code that we're looking at here. I prefer to start off in the text view, so I'm going to whack that space bar and go into our text view here. And the first question is, what is the major code construct found in the only subroutine called by main? So as you know, IDA will dump you into the main routine of whatever program you are analyzing. Here we have the main. Remember in lab 5.1, it was DLL main because we were analyzing a DLL. Same thing, different organization structure, but here we are. We are in main. And of course, if you were to scroll out of that and not know where you are, get lost, you can go ahead up to the jump menu jump by name and look for the underscore main. Let's go ahead and organize that by name, single underscore main, and we're back at our main subroutine function. All right, what is the major code construct? So we are not asking for code, but what is the type of code construct that we are looking at here? We are in main and we're going to jump down here to this only call that we see, which is to sub 40, 10, double zero, double click that. And we are in that subroutine. Right off the hop, we see the call to internet get connected state. So you can look that up for better context, but it's pretty obvious what it does. It gets the connection state of the internet. We can hover over it here and see that it returns a Boolean. So is it connected to internet? Yes or no. That is a pretty good assumption of what that does. Moving that from EAX into an EBP register with an offset, comparing that variable with zero, and then using that information to either jump or continue with this subroutine. Let's take a quick look at this 40102B, and we see error 1.1, no internet, a call to another subroutine, and then not much else. Going back to the first subroutine, if it is not zero, we jump over that, and success internet connection. So in both of these instances, we are pushing a string from an offset into the stack and calling the same subroutine, this 40105F, one or the other. Now, if we go into the graphical view, we can definitely see what we have here is an if statement. We get this internet get connected state, and depending on what it returns, it either does one thing or another, and then calls the same 40105F subroutine. So that is really all we need to know to answer the first question. What is the major code construct found in the only subroutine called by main? That is an if statement. If it was a loop, just going back into this graphical section here, we would see calls back to either this subroutine up here or some kind of arrow going back up to the set of functions that we're going through. So it's not a loop, it's not a case or anything like that. It is just a simple if-then statement. Moving on to question two, what is the subroutine located at 40105F? So this is the subroutine that we are calling from either one of these if-then paths. We can double click that and take a look. Now, IDA has not identified this as anything. We do not see any calls out to APIs or anything like that. Not much that we can see within this code as to what this does. 
So what we can do is go back, and I'm just using the back button on my mouse, or you can navigate with the forward and backward buttons here, just like a web browser. But we went back to these subroutines that we were analyzing earlier, and we're going to take a look at what this subroutine is ingesting. What's on the stack when that is called? And we can see right before it in both of these if cases, we have a string pulled from an offset. Either it is success internet connection with a new line at the end of it, or error no internet also with a new line at the end of it. So these are, these are strings, and more than likely this is presenting that string to a user in some sort of way. We don't see any calls to a port. We don't see any calls to a file or any kind of output. So more than likely, this is just passing it to the standard standard output. Um, if you ran this binary, it would just return that text to the command line. Or if something else was calling this, it would ingest that information and probably do something with it with its own if then statement. That is more than likely a print function. Moving on to question three, what is the purpose of this program? We sort of went over that in the last question. This just determines whether or not the machine running this code has an internet connection according to Windows. Um, once we go into this subroutine here, we are not really calling anything else of interest. If we go back to main here, we can see that it is a very simple program from the graphical view, not a lot going on. So there is no payload in this. It's not doing anything nefarious. It is a probably a small piece of a larger malware. And all it's interested in is, do we have internet? And that's everything. That is lab 6-1. Three quick questions, just taking a quick look at assembly and getting you used to following the bouncing ball and looking at what these programs do without getting bogged down into the minutia of completely reverse engineering it, just at a high level following what the program is doing. I hope these videos are helping you out. I'm having a lot of fun making them, and I will see you on the next one.